hello. When I was in the art shop buying my Prismacolor pencils the other day, I saw this bottle of Raven ink and I just had to have it. It's a pigmented ink by Art Spectrum. It cannot be used in a fountain pen, but it can be used with dip pens and brushes. I have a few Art Spectrum inks in my collection. They are primary colors, but I did not know they had a Raven ink. And as soon as I saw the word, it sparked this whole entire idea for an artwork. You can see it's got a very bluish tinge when I open it and I'll just pick some up in the dropper so we can see what the color looks like on a little swatch of paper here. It's an off-cut piece of watercolor paper. I dabbed some onto the paper and now I'll paint it out with the brush so we can really see what the color is going to look like. I'm just using an old Taclon brush that I reserve for inking. And I'm going to call this color a shadow turquoise. It's very blue, but there is also a greenish undertone. It feels more like turquoise to me than just plain old blue. There is also an indigo in the set and that was definitely bluer than this. So I'm just adding on a little bit more ink just to get more of a deep mass tone on one side. And you can see there's quite a range here from concentrated darkness to a lighter muted turquoise color. And I let it fully dry. I'm using a dip pen here. This pen was actually given to me by a good friend. It was her grandfather's pen and I'm very honored that she gave it to me. The nib is slightly bent though and I think I need to get it repaired. So I didn't actually end up using it for my artwork, but I'm glad I got to feature it briefly in this video. And a huge shout out to my friend who gave me the pen. Thank you so much. Let me show you my concept sketch. I mean, very obviously, when I saw the word raven, I just immediately thought of the bird, but that's not the whole idea. You can see I've written the word stamp on there and never more. I'll explain that more in a moment, but I wanted my drawing to be a bit bigger than what it actually is. So I'm going with a larger nine by 12 piece of paper for my final illustration. And I was going to do it on this particular paper, Kansu Milan du Roy, but it's cold press and has a bit of a texture. I actually wanted a smoother paper. So I found an off cut of a some Fabriano Artistico hot press and it's pretty much the perfect size. I just need to trim it down a little bit. I'm using the Canson pad as a guide because I was way too lazy to measure it all. Hey, whatever works, it's close enough. And then I just used a ruler to join all the lines together so I can cut it out and have a mostly perfectly sized nine by 12 piece of paper. Very exciting stuff here, but I thought I'd share some of the stuff that goes into planning an artwork, like getting the paper cut down. And I had this small paper trimmer out, which worked well enough for the short side of the paper, but unfortunately when I got to the long side, it was too big for the trimmer, so I've ended up having to use scissors to cut that other side, which you'll see in a moment. But one of the sides at least is perfectly straight. I do have a larger paper trimmer, but it would have required me to have to move other things out of the way to get to it. And I just decided scissors would be the fastest solution if my camera will stay in focus. I just took it slowly and I got a relatively straight cut. I'll just speed that up a bit so it makes it look like I know what I'm doing. And I always keep the little scraps like this for swatching or something like that. I'm just rubbing off the pencil edges and my piece of paper is finally ready to go. I forgot to record all of this bit here, which is tracing my drawing onto this nice cut piece of paper. But I remembered about halfway through, so you'll see a little bit of it. All I was doing here was tracing around the edges of the raven. I'm not going to add in all of the details or anything like that. I just want the basic shape so I can draw it in with the ink a bit later. And with this larger piece of paper, I'm going to have a bigger gap at the top. And that's because I wanted to add something into the background. So as a working artist who produces regular artworks for YouTube, it can sometimes be a real grind to actually come up with ideas. And sometimes I have to push through even when I really don't have anything. It's just experience that I'm able to produce as much as I do. And for me, this whole year has been a real struggle with creativity, much more than other years. But when I was standing in the art shop, this idea came to me all in one beautifully wrapped package like a rare gift from the heavens, and I could see it perfectly in my mind as to what this was going to be. This doesn't happen very often, so I was really excited. But here's the basic outline that I've traced onto the nice paper. And here's my idea for the background. I really wanted to incorporate some stamping into this, and I found one packet of alphabet letters, but it only has one E, and I need three E's. So I had to do some shopping around at a few places to get what I needed. And yes, it is a need because I absolutely had to have this. I found this packet of alphabet letters and it has three E's. I'm so happy about that. Part of my idea 
was inspired from The Raven, which is a famous poem by Edgar Allan Poe. So it's not a fully original idea of mine, it's more of a fan art piece, I guess you could say. I'm just showing you some of the letters that I used, because I really wanted to make the word Nevermore, and I thought that would be really fun to stamp in the background over and over again. That's a great stamp set, that one. I'm so glad I found it. I'm sure I'll have other uses for this in the future too. So these are all individual letters in clear silicone stamps, and you basically peel them off the backing and then put them onto an acrylic block, which is used for holding the stamps onto. And you can see I've arranged the letters there to make Nevermore. I decided I wanted them all to be lowercase letters because I'm going to create an endless pattern, and I didn't want that capital N to be standing out the whole way through. Now normally I like to use a black archival ink for my stamping, but I thought it would be too dark and it would take over the whole picture being really dominant, so I have this lighter shadow grey archival ink. It's permanent and waterproof once it dries, and hopefully this will create a lighter background than if it was that stark jet black. I did actually do a test run of this entire artwork in a smaller journal, and I'll show that at the end of this video. But now I'm finally ready to start this artwork, so let's get into it! Oh gosh, the first stamp is always the most terrifying to do. I'm thinking, oh, please let this work. Let the ink cover all of the letters and let it go on nice and evenly. It's really hard to see this grey ink. It's quite translucent on the back of the stamp. So I made sure I had that covered. There it goes, the very first stamp on the page. Make sure it's all squished down. Yay, it worked out, I'm so happy about that. And now to repeat this a whole bunch more times. Not quite fitting three Nevermores, an E got onto my backdrop, but this is actually quite good because I didn't want all of the Nevermores to be stacked underneath each other. So basically I'm going along and any letters that don't fit at the end go to the start of the next line so that the whole word gets staggered and it ends up looking a lot more chaotic, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be too perfect. And because I hadn't ruled guidelines, I was just kind of guessing as to where the stamp should be. So the lines aren't perfectly straight, and I think this actually works out well with it. In Poe's poem, the narrator goes quite crazy because the raven just keeps yelling nevermore. And I think my background ended up conveying this idea quite well. Now, I was trying really hard to not stamp too much on the raven itself, because in my practice run, I'd stamped the entire page, and the archival stamp ink actually affected the raven drawing ink, like it reacted a little bit, and you can see the letters sticking through it. And really, I should have cut out a raven-shaped mask to put over my picture and protect it from the stamping. I didn't think of that until a bit too late. So there are a few areas where the stamp does overlap onto the raven drawing, and I also had a couple of ghost prints, which you can kind of see in the middle of the raven, it does actually show in my final painting, but I'm not too bothered by it. It kind of added to its character. Some of the stamps, I didn't quite get all of the letters to print properly, and I had to go over them a second time. It didn't quite work, and there are a couple of letters which are a bit dodgy and double printed. But I was kind of in a zone when I was creating this. I did everything in one setting, and I just needed to get it out on the page without worrying too much about it being totally perfect. I think the flaws kind of benefit the whole artwork. And it's more about how I was feeling at the time. Like a snapshot, rather than something I laboured on for many days. I think the background has come out really cool, and I'm so glad I used the grey ink. It's a lot lighter than the black would have been, and so it's not going to be as dominant when I add the drawing of the raven, which is what I'm going to do now, using that lovely raven ink which inspired this entire thing. So I'm shaking it up really well because it is a pigmented ink and a lot of it goes to the bottom and it really does need to be mixed up so I can get the darkest possible ink. I remembered to put the lid back on the stamping ink and I'm just giving the stamp a bit of a clean as well to take off any excess so it's not too messy for later. Once that ink dries, as I said, it's really hard to get it off. So I switched over to this red dip pen, which is probably the best one I have in my collection, especially for drawing and getting really fine lines. Just making sure that pigmented ink is all mixed in together. I've got this tiny little pot that I'm going to fill with some of this ink because it's so much easier to dip the pen into that little pot than it is into the big bottle here. I don't like to leave the stopper out for too long because I don't want that ink to dry and mess up the pipette. So I filled up the dropper as much as it would allow and poured it into that little pot. I decided I wanted a second dropper full just to really get a lot of ink so I can easily dip my pen into it. 
I think it's better to do this because it also stops that main bottle of ink from getting too contaminated by other things dipping into it. And now I'm ready to go with the rest of this picture. As well as the dip pen, I also used a brush and a ceramic palette to put the ink in. And I did end up using some white ink at the end as well. Plus a little glove to begin with for the first part of the drawing, so I don't smudge my hand oils all over the paper. So here I go with the rest of it. I am so happy with how this has turned out. It's almost exactly as I had envisioned it in my mind. It's honestly like ideas as clear as this one really do come from somewhere else. It's so spooky. But I'll take it. This was so much fun to do. I had the best time making this piece of art. Like I said, I did the whole thing in one sitting. I've even edited this video on the same day. I just spent all day working on this and I've just had such a great time. I really feel like it's dug me out of my funk and I'm so grateful to have had such a clear idea. Let me know in the comments what you think of this and has an idea ever hit you with as much force as this one hit me? I'd be so curious to hear. It's amazing how one small item can just inspire an entire artwork and I'm very happy to have this Raven ink in my collection along with this grey archival ink that was really awesome too. And I almost forgot, here's the original picture I did in that Graby journal, a concept sketch if you will. It looks a bit like a seagull but I do quite like it and I knew I had to do this as a bigger artwork. I also did a matching page on the left hand side from a card I found in my stash. I really love this page spread. And here is the artwork that I ended up with. I like both of them, but I do like the one on the left better. It feels a lot more refined. Thank you so much for watching my creative frenzy. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button for more videos. Here's a couple of other artworks I've done and I'll see you all again in my next video. Have a great day and I'll swatch you later. Bye. Oh man, I'm exhausted now.